My name is Yosarian King. I'm the uh, CTO for Blackbird Interactive. Uh, we're a relatively small and new startup games company in Vancouver. Um, we've been working for the last couple of years on a uh, 3D real-time strategy game. It's called Hardware Shipbreakers. Um, it's based on a desert planet. You're harvesting wrecked spaceships out of the sand for resources and uh, selling them to Long March Industries. We've been using Unity since the beginning. Uh, our game development plans have changed a little bit over the years. Early on, we were going to be a small-scale Facebook game. Uh, so the Unity web plugin was, was, uh, seemed like a great way to bring really high-end graphics to the web. Uh, so we jumped on Unity early on. Since then, we've kind of shifted focus to more full 3D, higher production values. We've got a much bigger team and we're doing a PC product, but uh, Unity is still a really good fit for what we're doing. It's extremely dynamic and somewhat volatile right now. I've been in the games industry since 1995. I joined EA and worked in Central Tech. I was on FIFA soccer for a while. Uh, went back to Central Tech and ended up spending about 15 years there in different roles. EA, at that time, the games industry felt like AAA console was really what it was all about. Obviously being in the EA environment, that, that contributed to that feeling. Since leaving EA three years ago and helping start Blackbird, I've become much more aware of small indie development, of web games, uh, the whole mobile explosion. Within Vancouver, there's been some real kind of anchor tenants in the community. So these really big companies like EA or like Radical or um, some of the larger studios. Uh, a lot of people are kind of seeing opportunities in the mobile space and in the indie space and, and really smart people are leaving and starting their own small companies. So within Vancouver now, I've, I've lost count, I think we have hundreds of different companies, uh, many of them working with Unity, uh, doing cool things. Um, so it feels like the industry is, uh, I don't want to say at a crossroads, it's almost like this interconnected web of roads that's going in, in many different directions. Uh, there's a lot of changes. It can feel kind of unstable, but I think it's also a very exciting time to be part of the industry. When we first started our company, um, as the main technology guy, I wanted to figure out, you know, what technology do we need? How can we quickly get it up and running? And how can we focus on our core game development? Um, we looked at a number of different engines and, and Unity was the best fit of feature set, capabilities, ease of use, uh, strong editor environment, and being on the platforms that we wanted to be on. That said, it's still, it's a foundation. It's not, it's not your whole house. You don't just, you know, you still need a technical team. You still need strong programmers. You can still apply good design principles and, and good coding and debugging practices. So, you know, we've, we've made a number of mistakes over the last couple of years and we've corrected some of them and we're still hurt by others. But uh, basically I'm, I'm just trying to share our experience and help other people um, maybe boot, kick bootstrap a little quicker so they can go and make their own mistakes and not repeat ours. Just starting out in games development, I think making sure that you've got a passion for what you're doing, really thinking about how, how are you best gonna be creative. So if you're, whether you're an artist or a programmer or a designer or whatever role you choose to fill, um, how can you make sure that the creative and interesting elements of what you wanna do are the things you really get to focus on? Unity is good in that way, because as, as a technologist, it's kind of, there's a graphics engine, there's a physics engine, there's a, an editor environment, there's a place to put new tools. There's a whole lot of stuff that I don't need to reinvent from scratch. So I can kind of jump in and start focusing on what does my design and art team need? How can I enable them to build the game they've visualized? Uh, which is kind of a creative freedom for me. It means I don't have a lot of grunt work early on. I can go straight to the thing that's solving my own team's problems um, and not have to build up layer upon layer of, of core technology.